This morning you spoke of the cosmic Christ as reality or something like that. As Would a, you please say more about that? Because cosmic Christ has always struck me as very triumphant Christian imperialism. And that's clearly not how you're using no, it. No, no, not at all, no. Remember when I said that uh, this notion of Christ is not in competition with anything because it includes everything, all right? That's why I say the Christ symbol is not now limited to the Jewish Jesus, which did, I, I will be very orthodox. I still believe Jesus is the image of the invisible God. I still believe in the divinity of Christ. If you stay with me, you'll find out I'm quite conservative, all right? And ironically, it's that conservative holding on to the essentials, the essentials, which allows me to blow the whole thing wide open if you keep it there. So the cosmic Christ is as soon as matter and spirit became one. Now, we are the first generation that has a word for that. We now call it the Big Bang. We even give a date to it, 14.6 billion, some say 13.8, that God decided, it seems, and here time falls apart. I, I don't know if time even means anything. Uh, but God decided to show himself, herself, itself, uh, to manifest the innards of God and that's creation. So the early Franciscans insisted that the first Bible was creation. And now that is in Romans 1.20, if you want to check it out, all right? <laughs> that is in the Bible. The, everything you need to know is in the created universe. And they said that if we, if we didn't respect the first Bible, created world, if we didn't learn how to contemplatively honor animals and plants and waters and skies, and this magnificence that's around us every day, we would murder and mangle the second book. Hmm? The second book is that maybe a little over 2,000 years old, but the first Bible is 14 billion years old. That's the cosmic Christ. So Jesus is the personification. This is Christian belief. If you're not Christian, you don't have to believe it. It, it coheres though, it holds a lot together. Jesus is the personification in a moment of time when we were ready for an I-thou relationship, I think, when consciousness had evolved enough that we could fall in love with something, somebody. He became the human eyes and face of this infinite, eternal Christ, which is creation. So the cosmic Christ is saying, as Colossians and Ephesians say, the Christ existed from all eternity. Jesus was created in a moment of time. So you're, saying, you're saying the cosmic Christ is creation, part of what you're saying? Yes, not okay. part. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and that's a lot. If, if, if any of you think I'm, I'm making less of Jesus, you're not hearing me. If you think I'm taking away your Jesus, this makes Jesus far more central, the alpha and the omega, you know, of, of history that's saying, here's where it came from, divine love, and here's where it will return to, divine love. As Teilhard says, the Christ stands at the end of history, seducing it forward into love. Mm, good stuff. Back here.